We are at Sega's booth right now, and I am here with Aaron Weber. He is a community manager for uh, Valkyria Chronicles, and uh, we're going to take a look at Valkyria Chronicles 2, and uh, I have to say, it looks pretty damn good, man. Good to hear. I think so, too. Um, do you want to play the game a little bit and uh, tell us what's going on? Let's do So, here at E3, we're showing off some of the combat of Valkyria Chronicles 2. I think this is really important for fans of the original series, because a lot of people um, have seen that it's on the PSP, and their first question is, does it play like the original game? It's really important. So. We're happy to kind of show off that the game not only plays like the original game, but actually improves upon a number of facets of the original game for the PS3. So uh, right here, I'm using one of the Shock Troopers. Fans of the series will recognize this. Um, it's very, very similar uh, to the original game. You've got the canvas system that's still here and the Blitz battle system that also continues to be used in this game. One of the things that I noticed, I actually got a chance to play a little bit at uh, Sony's booth, is that uh, one of my biggest issues with the original Valkyrie Chronicles is that when you're zooming in to aim, the, the enemies are still shooting at you, and it seems like that's been fixed. Uh, in many ways, yeah. It's, it's anytime you stop moving, uh, like if I stop right here and I start aiming, they stop. So we can kind of take our time now that we're in position, but if we were to go back, then this guy is going to start shooting at us. So it's all about kind of... Uh, it's, it's a mastery of getting into the best position to take the best shot as quickly as possible, and that's what kind of differentiates the newer players from the really, really skilled players, just like the first game, I think. Yeah, that was one of my biggest things, is that I would, I would get to the point where I wanted to be, and I'd be uh, hitting this, the button to zoom in and line up my shot, and they'd still be shooting at me and kill me, so I was happy to see that change. Um, I think you mentioned to me a new class originally. Is, is that class available to you right now to show? Uh, let me see if I can call that class out here. That class is not available in the demo here, but I can talk to you a bit about them. Okay. Uh, the class is a melee-based class, and they're sort of a hybrid of the old engineers and uh, a sword and shield uh, combo. So they're laden with armor, they've got the shield, and if you uh, are getting hit from the front, you can block the bullets with the shield, you can close the gap, and then you can take enemies down toe-to-toe -to -toe with a sword. So it's a really effective class for kind of getting up close and personal or taking out uh, enemies on the front lines if they've got a lot of incoming fire. Okay, I'm noticing that uh, this uh, this guy right over here, number five, yep. I haven't seen that symbol before. What class is that? Ah, now that is actually going to be the engineer class, but the oh. engineer in this in this game is actually more of a medic. Um, and what we've done is we've taken the old engineer, which was completely support-based. You would heal tanks, you know, fix tanks, you would help your ally units, you would disarm landmines, and we've kind of broken that out. So the engineer now is solely focused on healing, um, but their new features that they can heal from long distances. So they don't have to be like as close as you and I are right now. Uh, they could be as far away as the Microsoft booth or something like that. And we can actually, we can heal each other from that distance. So it makes the strategy of, of actually employing them much more worthwhile. Cause I, I think in the first game, a lot of people didn't use them very much cause it was just more effective to just shoot people in the head and be done with it. Um, but there's actually a lot more strategy to that now. And then the melee class that we talked about uh, that actually has the support element of being able to reconstruct sandbags. So you can build cover for your friendly units that way. Take this guy out. All right, we got him. Let's see what we can do here. So you can use the, uh, the thumb analog here to kind of move around quickly or the D-pad to really line up the shot oh, perfectly. Oh, nice. That, yes. is a, that is really nice. And then if you actually, if you're really lazy, you can just uh, hit the triggers and the triggers will automatically go from one enemy to the next nearby you. But it always goes to the body, right? You never right. get the headshot. You're not going to get an automatic free headshot, so got to kind of line it up. Yeah, there we go. Now, you're, when you catch, capture this flag right here, is this going to be the end of the mission, or does this mission continue? Uh, actually, it continues, and that's a pretty important thing for this game is that, so we're going to capture this. See, since it's the PSP, it, it's not obviously able to hold as massive of a map as we did in, in the original game. So. Right. The way we've gotten around that is that once you capture a map, um, you can put units on standby, which puts them back into the pool here, and it's absolutely free to do that. So we'll put them back on standby. And now, whenever I hit the trigger, either right trigger or left trigger, like it's showing us here, it's going to let us transfer to the next part of the mission. So we hit that, oh, I see. and now we've got our flag starting right here, and I can pull in my units to take that flag, which will end the mission. So. Now, okay, so, so do you have to move all of your characters to that enemy flag to transfer them, or can you transfer them from your home base too? You can transfer them from the home base. And you can actually just keep a, a sort of like roster of units waiting for that moment that you capture the flag and you unlock the next part. Uh, the later missions too, what's going to happen is 
you'll have one final area you need to get to, but you might actually be able to choose which of the maps you want to start in. And one area might be really easy to get through or be great against like infantry. One area might have a lot of tanks. So it's kind of up to you and which strategy that you want to use uh, as to how you're going to take these guys down. Cool. So uh, when's it coming out? Cool. This game is coming out August 31st. We're announcing that here. Awesome. Uh, you have a price point? Um, that leave us 39.99, but we'll comment on that later to confirm. Okay, that sounds good. Well, thank you very much for your time. I'm very much looking forward to the game, and I know a lot of our listeners are. So I appreciate you taking the time, and uh, we'll much. talk to you soon. Right on.